Okay, so today we were supposed to uh, go to a uh, topic of topic number 40, I think. Yes. Yes. Yes, topic number 40. Just give me a second. Virtues and activities of the enlightened bodhisattvas of the pure land in accordance with the larger sutra. Ah, so yes, this yes. is another chapter in my commentary on the larger sutra. Yes, let me see. Same page uh, 389. Okay, yes. Uh, so the answer to this uh, topic uh, is as actually a, a, chap a chapter named like, like this topic. Uh, and that's on page uh, 389, 389. Okay, so let's go to that page and then you will see uh, this is actually an explanation of the larger sutras uh, sections 28 and 30. Um, virtues and activities of the enlightened bodhisattvas of the Pure Land. Yeah? Um, so actually this, uh, this section of the sutra uh, uh, Shakyamuni starts to explain what exactly is it that uh, that bodhisattvas, enlightened bodhisattvas, or the inhabitants of the center of the pure land, what do they do? Yes, uh, how do they spend their time? You you could say, um, and they explain that uh, basically that they, uh, as as we have already explained in, in when we explained the the, the twenty second vow, that uh, beings in the pure land uh, are not inactive. No, uh, quite quite the opposite. Uh, when beings attain enlightenment in the pure land, like all Buddhas in the ten directions, they are constantly, eternally active for the sake of sentient beings, guiding them, uh, teaching them the Dharma, uh, especially explaining the Paraimal vow if it's uh, uh, fitting or if it's uh, proper, if they have the karmic uh, conditions. Also teaching the Dharma as a Buddha, teaching the Dharma as a Bodhisattva, uh, disguising as unenlightened beings, uh, be be, being in many different places at the same time. So we will go over all of these uh, activities. And this is actually a very beautiful, uh, many passages. So I will just quote the passages and from time to time explain, but they are very clear, no? Uh, first of all, let's go to explain, the, to quote the Pure Land Sutra, the larger sutra. And then it says here, uh, the Buddha said to Ananda, all the bodhisattvas in the land of Amitayus will ultimately attain the stage of becoming a Buddha after one more life. Accepted are those who have made original vows for the sake of sentient beings, resolving to cultivate the merit of realizing their great vows to save all sentient beings. So basically, this is a, the, the, the fulfillment, the passage, the passage of fulfillment of the 22nd vow. Yes? Here Shakyamuni again like, tries to, let's say, uh, a paraphrase, uh, the, the, the the 22nd vow. Yes, this is the 22nd vow in other words. Uh, the ability to become a Buddha after one more life is the ability that enlightened bodhisattvas have to become Buddhas in other world systems uh, by sending Nirmanakayas there and uh, display the same uh, the same uh, uh, life story of Shakyamuni Buddha. You know? And we see this at the, at the start of the larger sutra. We said that the, all of these enlightened bodhisattvas present there, like Manjushri, like uh, uh, Maitreya, uh, and all of these great bodhisattvas, actually, uh, when they emanate bodies, uh, some of these bodies uh, uh, repeat the same story of Shakyamuni Buddha in other world systems. Okay, that become like a prince, uh, uh, they, they, they are destined to become a Buddha, then they start to practice, so-called practice, because... They, they, they pretend not to be enlightened and then they attain enlightenment or they manifest their enlightenment. Okay. Uh, so as Joshua Sensei says here is to always play the role of becoming Buddhas and teaching uh, the Dharma like Shakyamuni Buddha, of course. No? Um, and this is explained by Master Shinran here in the Imps of the Pure Land. He says here, those who reach the Pure Land of Happiness return to this evil world of the five defilements where like the Buddha Shakyamuni, they benefit sentient beings without limit. Yes. Uh, so they, these are very simple words, but very profound is because they are saying that, uh, he's saying here that all those who are born in the center of the pure and then they behave like enlightened beings, just like Shakyamuni Buddha. And they actually uh, have the ability to, to, to repeat uh, at infinitum, no? infinitely. Uh, the, the, the history of Shakyamuni Buddha in many world systems where that is needed. Yeah? Uh, of course, they can also um, serve the Dharma by being bodhisattvas uh, and disguising themselves in many, adapting their forms to many different 
audiences depending on their karma. And they will turn the wheel of Dharma as Buddhas. They will also be disciples. They will also be teachers, lay teachers. They will also be women, children, even whatever form is best suited to teach the Dharma. And of course, they, since they are enlightened beings, they can also manifest themselves as Shakyamuni Buddhas, enlightened, uh, fully enlightened beings, uh, preaching the Dharma openly to gods and men and to all sentient beings. Okay. Uh, there are there is other passage here. Uh, here, here Yoshio Sensei explains in page 391 that uh, one who actually becomes a Buddha uh, will clearly save all beings. So, uh, so there can be no distinction between becoming a Buddha and keeping one's original vow. So remember that the, uh, we, we talked about the four great vows of the Mahayana. No? Uh, no matter how numerous the beings are, I vow to save them all. Uh, no matter how uh, numerous the evil passions, I vow to conquer them all. No matter all the Dharma gates, I vow to master them all. Uh, it doesn't matter how lofty the, the, the path of the Buddhas uh, is. Uh, I vow to become a Buddha. Uh, there are many ways to formulate this fourth great uh, Mahayana vows. But of course, the only way to fulfill those vows is to become a Buddha yourself. Yes, because you cannot save sentient beings and lead them towards enlightenment if you are not yourself a Buddha. No? It, it makes sense, no? So uh, you, 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 in order to fully uh, uh, practice the, the, these four, four great vows and to practice the virtues of, of Samantavadra, remember the ten, the, the ten uh, vows of Samantavadra that uh, incarnate the eternal activity of all Buddhas to save sentient beings and to practice all of the great uh, paramitas, uh, wisdom, compassion, and all of this, uh, perfect wisdom, perfect compassion, the only way to fully have perfect wisdom and perfect compassion is to become a Buddha, okay? And since we uh, uh, are in the path of the primal vow, yes, uh, so we if, if, we, if we have received a faith in Amida Buddha, we will uh, go and be born in the center of the pure and attain enlightenment, and we will behave like enlightened bodhisattvas who can sometimes uh, become uh, manifest themselves as Buddha sometimes as unenlightened beings and actually at the same time they can be in one uh, emanation they can be a Buddha in one other emanation they can be an a Bodhisattva a student so they can be many many things at the same time yes and in different places at the same time for the benefit of sentient beings okay and uh, so uh, remember remember that uh, also. And there is another passage here in page two, 392 of the larger Sutra commentary by Yosho Sensei. He says here, Ananda, says Shakyamuni Buddha, each Esravaka in the Buddha land of Amitayus emits a light for one fathom around his body. The light of a Bodhisattva shines a hundred Johannas. There are two Bodhisattvas who are the most dignified. Their majestic light reaches everywhere in the universe of a thousand million worlds. Ananda asked, who are, wh what are the names of these two bodhisattvas? And then Shakyamuni Buddha replied, one is called Avalokiteshvara and the other is Mahastamaprapta. They had both performed bodhisattva practices in this world and at the end of their lives, they were born by transformation in that Buddha land. Okay, uh, so the, the reason the reason why these two bodhisattvas are described in more detail or in more with more exalted and, and um, with more remarks, you could say, is because they have been there uh, longer. Okay, this is what uh, is explained here in the commentary. Okay, so we shouldn't uh, misunderstand this passage to think that ah, when you go there, then the Navalokiteshvara Mahastama Prapta will benefit sentient beings, but we 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 will not. We will just <laughs> just watch them do it. No. And it is clear, clearly explained in the sutra that all beings who attain a birth in the center of the pure land, yes, by transformation, yes, according to the 18th vow, they are benefited by all the 48 vows. So naturally, we will all be like Aulokiteshvara, like Amida, like Amahastama Prapta. Remember that in the center of the pure land, there is not a clear, there is not a, a difference in the, in, in the bodies of, of beings. And this is ex explaining one of the vows, no? that all beings in the pure land have perfect uh, bodies of gold, of infinity, emptiness, 
and they will have the same enlightened capacities with no difference between them because they will be uh, there having all of them, the Dharmakaya, Sambhogakaya, Nirmanakaya. However, it is uh, out, out of respect for Mahastama Prapta and Avalokita Jivara, they are uh, praised no? because they have been there uh, longer than, than, than we will be there. No? It's like going to a house and we are equally guests of Amida Buddha in the same house, but some guests have been there longer than we are. So we like we have some uh, some respect for them, of course. Yes. And of course, our uh, Lukiteshvara, uh, Mahastava Prapta, since we entrusted ourselves to Amida Buddha, they have been our constant companions. You know, and this is explained also by Shinran and Honen and, and the sutras that uh, for all of the, all those who have Shinjin and faith in Amida Buddha, then Avalokiteshvara, Mahastama Prata, always at their side, they are their good friends. And of course, all the Buddhas in the Ten Directions become our good friends and our protectors and benefactors, okay? Because they, they praise uh, the light of Amida Buddha in us and the fact that Amida Buddha will help us to become enlightened beings in the Pure Land so quickly. So they naturally feel a lot of affinity towards our decision, towards entrusting to Amida Buddha, okay? Uh, however, uh, this is uh, clearly explained here in the sutra that uh, that Avalokiteshvara Mahastama Prapta uh, are like the helping hand of Amida Buddha, and they have been there lot longer. Okay. Uh, that it is also explained here in the sutra, uh, talking about the, the there are many things to be said about this because this passage is quite long, so like like five pages in the sutra, just explaining the qualities of the Bodhisattvas there. There is another passage here that says, this is Shakyamuni Buddha referring to these bodhisattvas. He says, their supernatural powers know no obstruction and their physical senses are sharp, sharp and clear. Yes. So in other words, we will be clairvoyant. We'll be, be omnipresent, omniscient. We will know, know it all. We, we, we will be in all places at the same time because we have the Dharmakaya. Yes. We will have bodies of glory uh, and, and, and the Sambhogakaya eternally in the pure land. We will have the ability to be many places at the same time. So we will have no obstruction, yes, when it comes to our mind powers. This is also explained by Master Shantao and Shinran. No? So since we are born in the pure land, we will exercise supernatural powers for the benefit of sentient beings. Yes, it is also explained here in the larger sutra. He says, with the physical eye, they referring to the enlightened bodhisattvas in the pure land, they see clearly discerning objects without error. The sight of their divine eye reaches everywhere without limit. You know? And uh, why uh, this ability? Because in order, if you can look at all the universe at the same time, you will be able to see all sentient beings suffering in samsara and you will be able to help them. Okay? So uh, if you go to the pure land, then you will have access to these omniscience, and through these powers, you will be able to benefit sentient beings, okay? Remember that this is the reason why uh, bodhisatt uh, bodhisattvas and Buddhas, enlightened bodhisattvas and Buddhas have such powers, yes? Because they have access to the Buddha nature, and this Buddha nature is omniscient, has perfect compassion, perfect wisdom, and all myriad of supernatural powers, yes? But these supernatural powers are always put to the service of others. This is what characterizes a Buddha. Yes, this is the great difference between Buddhas and 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 and, and other unenlightened beings who are still powerful, but they don't have bodhicitta. Yes, they they don't have power. The the these uh, unenlightened powers, and they are also thinking about themselves. No, uh, like these uh, Brahma proud Brahma gods who are not Buddhists. Uh, in the case of enlightened bodhisattvas and great Buddhas, they are constantly thinking of others. Actually, it is said that Amida Buddha and all Buddhas, they see sentient beings in samsara as they see themselves. So there is not clear distinction between them and others. So they are constantly benefiting others. Yes, because they see no difference, no difference between them and others. You see, they have no ego. So this is this is a great difference. You know, Shakyamuni Buddha also said in the larger sutra. Yes. Uh, talking about the, 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 the great deeds of uh, uh, inhabitants of the center of the pillar, he says, whether going or coming, proceeding or remaining, their hearts are unattached. Their acts are in accordance with their will and are unrestricted, and they have no thought of discrimination. In them, there is no idea of self or others, you know? no idea of competition or dispute. With the heart of great compassion to benefit all living beings, and with tenderness and self-control, 
de ver no enmity, no, no, no hatred, no, or grudge against anyone. Free of mental hindrances, they are pure in mind and without indolence, unbiased, noble-minded, sincere and tranquil. Their hearts can revere, appreciate and enjoy the Dharma. Having extinguished all evil passions, they are free of those tendencies that cause one to fall into evil realms. They have accomplished all the duties of a bodhisattva and are fully endowed with immeasurable virtues. Okay, so this is another uh, proof that these are not ordinary bodhisattva because they have completed all of the duties of a bodhisattva. That means accomplish all of the duties of a bodhisattva means that they are an enlightened bodhisattva. You know, uh, fulfilling uh, uh, the, the wishes of sentient beings and guiding them towards enlightenment. They are enlightened beings. No. Uh, also says here, having reached deep meditation and gained supernatural powers, transcendent knowledge and wisdom, they are established in the seven practices leading to enlightenment and are devoted to the Buddha Dharma. Okay, so the Buddha Dharma is the is the reason, uh, is the whole purpose of Amida, Amida, Amida Buddha's pure land. You no, know? is to be a place uh, for all sentient beings to go and attain enlightenment. Yes. And even for those who are not able to be born in the center, no, they go there, at least they are, they will never fall to samsara ever again. Okay. So this is indeed a, an inconceivable blessing, no? Uh, having destroyed the hindrance of the three defilements, they revel in using their supernatural abilities. They possess all the powers of cause, condition, will, vow, skillful means, continuity, good, meditation, intelligence, and attentive hearing the powers of generosity, precepts, patience, effort, concentration, and wisdom, the powers of right-mindedness, right contemplation, and supernatural faculties, and so on and so forth. They also possess the six paramitas, no? Dana, sila, you know, giving, morality, patience, effort, meditation, and wisdom, okay? So uh, this is clearly talking about enlightened beings, yes? Because the only beings who have attained the perfection of the six perfections, the six paramitas, are the Buddhas themselves. Yeah? This is explained also in the in all the sutras. This is clearly explained. Okay, and, um, so there are many many of such abilities, and even even Shakyamuni Buddha himself says that he's only giving a very brief, very brief summary of all the things that uh, that are going on in the Pure Land. He says that if I if I were able to describe all of the things in the pool and a lot of the activities of these great beings there, uh, even a kalpa would not be sufficient. He says something to that effect, something to that effect. So he's saying that uh, basically that this is only a brief summary in given words, you know, <laughs> just to add. Okay, so this is beyond our comprehension, you know, the joy that they have, the Dharma joy that they have. Okay, uh, so this is to the point of, 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 of uh, saying that uh, the Pure Land is not a, a resort <laughs> vacation. Uh, this is more, much more interesting than, than, than that. No, it's actually a place of great, uh, of great activity, great joy, yes, of great celebration of the Dharma, no? and constantly uh, um, saving sentient beings, you know, guiding them towards the Pure Land, enjoying the process, dwelling in the Dharmakaya, uh, always being uh, resting, and at the same time, they are active. No, this is the great mystery because they are constantly doing this, but for them it's not like a, like a, like a work or, or, or some tedious activity. They are actually enjoying this. You know, they are shining with compassion and wisdom. Uh, so this is these are just a brief summary of the joys that await us in the pure land. Yes, and we will of course be able to benefit, as Master Genshin says, quoting the larger sutra, and also Shinra. We will be able to benefit all those who, uh, uh, with whom we have had uh, uh, karmic connections in the past, both good and bad. You know? The people we have uh, killed in the past, the people we have, uh, made, um, we have made them fall into the lower realms in the past, which have been many, because we have uh, held the wrong views in the past. Also the people we have loved, you know, many wives, many children, uh, husbands, uh, pets, uh, all, all these relationships, that have been, uh, of course, uh, flawed, and uh, and they have had uh, the imperfection of suffering in samsara, no? Because no matter how much you, you love someone, if you buy them food, you even build them a palace, uh, you can do everything for them. But if they die and they are in, still in samsara, they they will continue to suffer, not? So this is imperfect love, imperfect compassion. But in our case. 
since we are going to be born in Amida Buddha's pure land through the primal vow, once we are born in Amida Buddha's pure land, we will be able to benefit and to remember the kindness of, of, of all those we have met in the past. Yes. And also we'll be able to see our own uh, misgivings, our own uh, mistakes yes, in, the, in former lives. And we will be able to repair this by giving them uh, the, the ultimate gift of uh, the Dharma, yes, which is to lead them to enlightenment. Uh, so this is in, indeed, this is truly uh, joyful no? because we will be able to benefit all sentient beings. Yes. And since we have had innumerable past lives in samsara, we have actually have a karmic connection with all beings in the universe. So we will be able to remember all of that and we will be able to act in accordance with wisdom and compassion. And as Master Genshin says, here in a, in a kind of provocative way, you know, he says, is this not real joy? Is this not real enjoyment? And you say, of course, this is real enjoyment. Compared to the, mm -hmm. to the, to the turbulence and, and sufferings in samsara, of course, uh, basically what Master Genshin and, uh, and, and Shakyamuni Buddha, uh, by basically the purpose of the Lajya Sutra, uh, uh, Shakyamuni Buddha explaining all of this is, what are you waiting for? Just go to the pure land, <laughs> okay? Uh, he's doing many, uh, you know, the, he is doing, uh, uh, putting a lot of effort to describe the activities of the Bodhisattvas, the beauty of the pure land, uh, the, the, all the, the noble qualities of Amida Buddha, Avalokitesh, Mahastama Prata, is for us to, to, to wish to be born there, yes? Through the gate of the primal vow. This is the whole purpose, yes? Uh, <clears throat> there is another passage here that I, I think is worth, is also worth uh, quoting it. It's not so long. It says here, uh, with the Buddha eye, they, the enlightened bodhisattvas of the pure, and they completely realize the nature of dharmas, phenomena. Yeah, remember that dharmas, with the, with um, uh, a small d, yes, it's phenomena. And we just said the uh, with uh, dharma with a big d, you know, samsari capital d, phenomena. Samsari phenomena, yeah, dharmas. And you also say the d with big d is the dharma, no, the teaching of the Buddha. Yes. So with the Buddha eye, uh, this enlightened voice, they realize the nature of all phenomena. Yes, the emptiness of samsaric existence. Yeah? And they also observe with the eye of equality that the three worlds are empty and non-existent. So they try to learn the Buddha Dharma, okay? So for them, there is no samsara, yes? So they don't see the... So they, they, they do understand that there is suffering from the limited point of view of sentient beings. However, they know that it is still all a dream, yes? And they strive uh, to benefit sentient beings, yes? And acquire varied eloquence, it says here, to read living beings of affliction caused by the evil passions. Since all dharmas have arisen from suchness, that is, a true uh, a, a reality, the bodhisattvas see them as they really are, and no skillful means of speech that will develop good habits and destroy bad ones in living beings. So as uh, Jesus and Say explains here, you know, uh, so both unenlightened phenomena or enlightened phenomena, like for example, the manifestations of the pure and have the same base as the condition, ultimate reality, suchness, the dharmakaya. But they have different causes. The first for samsaric phenomena is delusion and attachments for unenlightened phenomena. Yes. Even if the same basis be you have delusion as an attachments, you will see samsaric phenomena. Yes. Like for example, the creatures in hell. This is the clear example of Joseph and said that he gives. There are many evil ver birds in, in hell, no, many monsters. Yes. But these are actually uh, based also in the Dharmakaya, but with the condition of delusion. Yes. So if you have delusion and attachments, then unenlightened uh, or uh, impure uh, appearances will come to your mind, yes? And you will, have, uh, you will be scared and you will be trapped in samsara in that way, yes? Through your own karma. However, the same basis, but if you have enlightenment, if in infinite wisdom and infinite compassion for enlightened phenomena, yes? If you recognize the Dharmakaya as it truly is, yes? And you recognize the Buddha nature in yourself and in the universe, then you will be able to have enlightenment, infinite wisdom, and infinite compassion. And naturally, enlightened uh, manifestations appear. Like, for example, the birds in the pure land, for example, that are the manifestation of Amida Buddha's enlightened mind. Okay? So, this is the clear example. Remember that there will always be uh, forms, and, uh, forms yes, uh, uh, for consciousness. Yeah? But the thing is that if you are enlightened being, you will be uh, in a pure land, or you will see all the enlightened manifestations in the pure land and in the Sambhogakaya realms. Yes. And if you are an unenlightened being and you have even the same basis, 
but you have uh, attachments and delusions, then you will see all the various uh, uh, delusions and uh, manifestations of samsaric phenomena. Okay, so even if they have the same basis, they have different uh, conditions. So the enlightened bodhisattvas in Amida Buddha's pure land, they see this difference. Okay, and they see uh, and they dwell constantly in the true Dharmakaya, the true Buddha nature. Okay, they have discovered their own true Buddha nature. Um, they say with the Dharma eye, they, the enlightened bodhisattvas in the pure land, they observe and know thoroughly the teaching of the way, the Dharma, no, Dharma path. With the wisdom eye, they see truth and attain the other shore. In other words, they have attained nirvana. It couldn't be more clear than this. Yes. Many people misunderstand the term uh, bodhisattva. Yes, and I do thank Yosha Sensei for letting me know this because at the beginning of my studies of the Pure Land Sutras, it was quite confusing at the beginning. Yes, because according to other uh, Buddhist schools of the Mahayana, they they think that there may be in some stage of of, of, of bodhisattvahood, yes? But I didn't quite under, understand because when you read all of these capacities, you realize, huh, uh, the, these, these bodhisattvas are not behaving like, like students, but as, as teachers, so how come? Yes, but remember, this is very important for you to understand the difference between enlightened bodhisattvas and uh, bodhisattvas in aspiration. Clearly, and we can see this from all of the things uh, we have mentioned here, which Shakyamuni Buddha himself did, yes? That he was referring to enlightened bodhisattvas to Buddhas who, who can manifest either as Buddhas themselves or, or as Bodhisattvas, okay? So this is very important distinction. Um, and also it says here in the larger sutra that they, their samsaric bodies and evil passions have been extinguished together with the remaining karmic tendencies. In other words, they're completely pure, completely pure of all samsaric phenomena, yes? Uh, when they hear the profound Dharma, their minds are free of doubt and fear. Yes, because they have mastery over all of the Buddhist teachings. No, it's also one of the vows of Amida Buddha. No, that all beings in the pure land will be able to preach the Dharma perfectly. In other words, as enlightened beings, you will know all the sutras and all of the uh, commentaries. You will know everything that is to know about the Dharma, and you will be able to to explain it in different ways and and um, for the benefit of sentient beings. So you will be able to know which which teaching to teach to what sentient being. So this is a tremendous. A capacity, you know, uh, because if you are not enlightened, sometimes even if you want to help others, and even if you know the sutras, <laughs> uh, uh, you might uh, be uh, still commit mistakes. And sometimes you teach something that someone is not ready to hear. Yes, uh, but Buddhas, on the other hand, they know all the sutras perfectly, and they know what to teach to others, you no, know? because they know the minds of others. Uh, uh, we have already explained this many times, but this is a, a, an incredible capacity. Yes. And uh, this is actually explained by Yoshua Sensei here, uh, in other words, in, in, in page 404. He says here, uh, the Buddha said to Ananda, the Bodhisattvas born in the Buddha land expound the right Dharma whenever appropriate. And because they are in accord with the wisdom of enlightenment, their expositions are infallible and free of error. Yes, this is incredible, no? So free of error, because they are, you are an enlightened being, so you don't commit mistakes when teaching to others. Uh -huh. With unhindered wisdom, they expound the Dharma to others. With single-heartedness, they seek the Dharma tirelessly. Always desiring to expound the doctrine, they never grow weary. So they, ne they never go tired, okay? Because you have the, 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 the perfection, the six perfections. And one of the perfections is constant uh, virya, which is uh, diligence. You are constantly diligent, okay? And this diligence is also accompanied uh, with all the uh, perfect wisdom and compassion. Okay, so imagine that. Uh, it says here, and I will uh, just quote this because it's, it's very beautiful. I mean, this this is one of my favorite passages in the sutra. <laughs> uh, I will just put the, just quote it here. It says, they seek only the right path, finding neither joy nor sorrow in other matters. They extract thorns of passion and give peace of mind to multitudes of beings. Because of their mind and wisdom, there is no one who does not revere them. No? Beautiful, no? So, it also says here, Ananda Bodhisattva, Ananda, Bodhisattvas of that land, the land of Amida Buddha, have innumerable virtues such as these, of which I have given, I have given you only an outline. So, only a summary, in other words, no? an outline. If I were to expound them in full detail, a thousand million kalpas would not be alone to do so. 
I had said one kalpa, but actually Shakyamuni Buddha said thousand million kalpas. So imagine an eternity just describing the Pure Land. Yes, such is the beauty of the Pure Land. Such is the the you could say the capital of the enlightened realms of all Buddhas is Amida Buddha's Pure Land. Okay, so by all means, uh, this is why all, all in all the Mahayana sutras and Vajrayana, this is the the destination number one for all Buddhists is to go there. Yes, uh, is to go to Amida Buddha's Pure Land. Uh, because basically because it's, it's the best pure land of all and also because it's the easiest to go to yes if you go just by the primal vow you just say amida buddha's name you only do this through the remainder of your spiritual life yes say amida buddha's name you wish to be born in, and you just trust in amida uh, and trust yourself to amida buddha and that's it amida buddha will take care of everything so indeed uh, the primal vow as, as we have explained is there is not nothing that keep, that can be compared to this Yes, it's the ultimate teaching of the Mahayana, yes, and rightly so, yes, it's not because all of the other teachings, remember, are not lofty, yes, are not true, no, they are true, but the thing is that they are limited in, in the scope and in the, in the ways that they can benefit all sentient beings, they are only destined to an exclusive or an elite uh, group of sentient beings who can practice meditation, visualization, and, thank, ha, ha, and have perfect morality and precepts, yes. And However, they were especially given for the right Dharma age. Yes, not, they sense. are not suitable for the last Dharma age in which we live now. In that sense, yeah, thank you. Actually, Jesus uh, says yes, they were destined to 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 the first five hundred years, yeah. or for the direct disciples of Shakyamuni Buddha and, and the or, disciples of and, the disciples. And they, they were still. Some people were capable to practice them also in the age of the semblance of the Dharma. That is in the next time, but during our age, that is impossible to attain enlightenment through those practices. Yes. Yes. Actually, as we have explained in previous uh, in our previous discussions, uh, it is explained in the Mahayana Sutras that uh, thousands of bodies, uh, enlightened bodhisattvas or great bodhisattvas, uh, are actually uh, being born in the in the in, in these dark times, in this Mapo age, uh, just to keep the Dharma alive. You know. Uh, to try to encourage people to uh, at least to stay in the Mahayana, in the Vajrayana, okay? But however, the, the, the people who are uh, uh, honest and good teachers, chances are they are not like you and me. They are not uh, normal human beings, but they are actually even emanations of Buddha, Bodhisattvas or great Bodhisattvas from the past, taking birth in this Dharma age, just to uh, 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 try to keep the Dharma alive for people and uh, and at least for the people who are still not capable of entrusting themselves to uh, Amida Buddha uh, they are, they are they try to keep them busy doing other things that are of course also valuable but however they are not so direct as the primal vow so the the the, the, the teaching of the primal vow as master Tao Shuo and master Shinra uh, Shinran said is the teach it in ripeness uh, for our day and age this is the appropriate teaching for our day and age Jodo Shinshu because it's the teaching that can save sentient beings uh, who are incapable of morality, incapable of moral practice, incapable of, of great spiritual efforts, yes? And if you don't have precepts, uh, I'm sorry to tell you this, but uh, you won't be able to develop wisdom. You won't be able to develop meditations, okay? Uh, so nowadays, it's clearly, it's cl it is as crystal, crystal, uh, crystal clear that uh, in, in our Mapo age, uh, Many, even monks and nuns, are not keeping the precepts, okay? So I'm saying all of this to, to say that uh, all, of, all, all of our uh, Buddhist practice, you know, uh, in, in this Dharma age, uh, is not, does not amount to anything, you know? Uh, it's, very, it's, very, it's very difficult for it to, to, to lead you to escape samsara, yes? It may create some good karmic connection for you, for future lives or Buddhas to help you, no doubt about it. But that you will become a Buddha through them, as, as Shinran said in the Tani show, this is uh, ridiculous even. It's impossible. Okay, So we should entrust ourselves to Amida Buddha and be born in Amida Buddha's pillar where enlightenment is surely attained. No? Uh, I will just end these beautiful passages. Uh, and there are many passages that I couldn't read because we don't have, maybe I don't have all the time, but I will also read uh, to you uh, some of the passages of Shinran. No? Uh, because uh, one of the other things that we do, besides helping all sentient beings and being in constant bliss, if that weren't enough, <laughs> we will also be uh, uh, grateful 
towards all the Buddhas in the 10 directions. Because remember that uh, uh, Buddhas, all Buddhas in, in the past, yes, have given us a hand, have uh, actually helped us to entrust ourselves to Amida Buddha in this life. Okay, so uh, it's not like, 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 yes, we are born in this life and we uh, entrust ourselves to, uh, to Amida Buddha, to Amida Dharma, and that's it. No, there is a, a whole story that we don't know about, yes, in the background, uh, or Buddha's trying to help us, you know, and Amida Buddha and all Buddhas in the 10 directions trying to teach us that this is the best Dharma gate to us, for us. And so, and so we will be grateful to all of those Buddhas in, in all the Pure Lands and in Amida Buddha's Pure Land, and we will help them we will go them and make offerings to them to say thank you and not only say thank you but we will also become their disciples yes out of gratitude and we will help them in their dharma missions okay uh, related or not related to the primal bubble we will have also um, uh, uh, we have the capacity to be grateful towards them i will just quote the passages here he says here in the inns of the two gateways of entrance and emergence a work by shin ranshon and he says Shakyamuni and all other Buddhas are truly our compassionate father and mother. With various compassionate means, they lead us to awaken supreme Shinjin that is true and real. Yes. So the awakening of Shinjin is the work of Amida Buddha, but it's also the help of with the help of all Buddhas in the ten directions. They have helped us to come to to this life in human life and entrust ourselves to Amida Buddha. It also says here in the lamp for the later, later ages, letter two, it says, Shinran, Shinjin faith is bestowed through the compassionate means of Shakyamuni, Amida, and all the Buddhas in the ten quarters. Yes. Yeah. So all Buddhas in the past have helped us in one life or the other to uh, uh, slowly build trust in the Buddha Dharma and uh, entrust ourselves to Amida Buddha. It also says the true and fundamental intent for which all the Buddhas past, present, and future appear in this world is solely to teach the inconceivable vow of Amida, okay? So in our past lives, when we practice Buddhism, chances are uh, that we uh, discover the primal vow on Amida Buddha on a very gradual manner, you know, slowly doing gestures of uh, gratitude and gestures of uh, devotion towards the Buddha in many lives, yes, it, it, it started like to cook, to cook us, imagine like a potato, you know, to, to put uh, some some uh, uh, fire there it makes us soft, soft. Until this life, yes, we were hot enough that we were able to entrust ourselves to Amida Buddha through the help of all Buddhas in the ten directions who actually helped us to be devotional towards them and towards Amida Buddha. And now we say, oh, I will just entrust myself to Amida Buddha. So this is a very long process. Okay, so we will naturally. Uh, go to Amida Buddha's pure land, and upon attaining enlightenment in the pure land, as Joshua Sensei says here, we, as Joshua Sensei says here, we will naturally wish to say thank you to each one of them in particular. Okay, uh, and if that wasn't enough, we will also enjoy many conversations in the pure land. It says also in, in the larger sutra, uh, we will also go there and. While we are doing many other things at the same time, we, we will also have like one channel of communication, I would say, just to converse with one another about our story, how we were, how we were born in Amida Buddha's Pure Land, yes? Which was like a tremendous adventure, yes? Uh, but of course, we don't know this now, but in the Pure Land, since we will be able to see all our past lives, yes? We will be able to converse with one another to say, okay, how, 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 how did you come here, okay? And this will be a, a, a very good topic of conversation. You know? uh, so there are many things to enjoy in the Pure Land, many, many Dharma activities to do, uh, a lot of gratitude that we will have. Okay, so, and, uh, and as Shakyamuni Buddha says, even if he has spent a billion kalpas, many bil millions of kalpas, explaining all of the beauties and splendor of the Pure Land, he could not finish. Okay, so of course, this is beyond our comprehension. Okay. And of course, we will we will not be able to understand everything about this uh, until we are born in the pure land, of course. But it's, I, I think it's good from time to time, you know, read the larger sutra and enjoy, enjoy our religion, enjoy our faith, and appreciate, appreciate what Amida Buddha has done for us. You know? Okay, I don't know if maybe Yoshi Sensei has something to say, or maybe Yoshin. So, uh, I'm just happy that, uh, you know, uh, I I try my best to help many people 
but I uh, one of the problems that I often meet is that I can't really know what is beneficial for them what mm. uh, what is the right word <laughs> what is the right action you know i might have a good intention but because i don't know their mind uh and i don't know what uh, best words to choose i might do wrong <laughs> to them or uh, i might do more harm to them than help them mm. but Thanks to Amida Buddha, when I go to the Pure Land, I will have infinite wisdom and know exactly what to say, exactly the right moment, and exactly what to do to help others. That's mm. very good and very important. Yes, uh, indeed, Sensei. <laughs> <laughs> mm.